I've come back to Bristol to trace where my compulsion started to take hold. I was at Bristol University and I, I left after a year and a half and that's when I started controlling my world a lot more. Um, and that's also the time I moved in with three other comics, uh, Mark, John and Russell. Um, and my memory of living with them is very... I remember being very angry a lot of the time about a lot of stuff that didn't matter. And that's the first time I really realised it was going to cause problems with other people and with friends. I spent a lot of time moaning about teaspoons, <laughs> which I sorely regret now. I'm here to meet up with my old flatmates. Comedians John Robbins, Mark Holder, and an up-and-coming young scamp named Russell Howard, who you may have seen on one of the other channels. We did have arguments about the teaspoons because they would disappear. The spoon wars. What we call the spoon wars. The yeah. spoon wars of 2006. Of all the people I've met who I would say are on a scale, I would say you're probably the furthest left in that you have no compulsions or no. bacteria things at all. If I left some Rice Krispies hanging around, I don't give a shit, whereas you would put as much into everything, into every tiny little thing, which is probably overall better, but it just must be exhausting to kind of spend all that effort writing comedy and then go, right, now I've got to sort my shoes out. And But that same level of dedication to menial tasks. That, that did unhinge you quite a lot, because when it's the lack of control. I feel like what? I could have saved you if it weren't for him. I feel like... For me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because every time I just got you around to washing the cups properly and things, it, you would just sort of pour chocolate into the radiators. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would just think, I'm not going to worry about the cup anymore. You know, in terms of the wider perception of obsessive-compulsive disorder, it's something that, whether you thought I had a genuine case or not, you were quite happy to play with. People would take spoons into their rooms when you take them into your room, you're stealing them. You're not just leaving a spoon and not washing it. Yeah, yeah but, but you were also, hang on, hang on, you didn't mind that. You, it didn't kill you. It didn't kill me, but it, it made me tense in my house. But I used to go and sleep in the car some nights because I hated being in the house because I thought, oh, my God, they hate me and they know that I'm them. an arsehole about spoons. Do you remember? Ah, oh, that's awful. Living I with other know. people and thinking... When did oh, that my... happen? Quite a few nights oh, I would go and sleep. didn't. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I would have changed the ways. If you were that miserable, I didn't know you were that upset. It was interesting to hear them say that they wish I'd told them that I was sleeping in the car because the mess bothered me. Because that, to me, is the nub of the issue. Because my belief is that things should be done that way, I don't want to have to nag at people. I just believe it should, so it gets to me when it's not, and I, I, I put the fault on me. I'm not happy with my compulsion. I know it's my problem, so I will go out to the car because it's my fault, and I deserve to be unhappy for wanting it a certain way. Driven by misery over teaspoons and my other compulsions, I moved out and went to live alone in the most anonymous place I could think of. 